मिड डे मील स्कीम इज अ सेंट्रली स्पॉन्सर्ड स्कीम दैट प्रेस्क्राइब्स टू सर्व हॉट कुक्ड मिड डे मील टू स्कूल चिल्ड्रेन स्टडिंग इन क्लासेस वन टू एट ऑफ द गवर्नमेंट गवर्नमेंट एडेड स्कूल्स स्पेशल ट्रेनिंग सेंटर्स मदरसाज एंड मकताब्स सपोर्टेड अंडर द सर्व शिक्षा अभियान दिस इज वन एरिया वेयर स्कूल्स नीड टू एडेयर टू हेल्थ हाइजीन एंड सेफ्टी स्टैंडर्ड्स एज इट डायरेक्टली इम्पैक्ट द हेल्थ ऑफ द चिल्ड्रेन इन दिस वीडियो वी विल लर्न अबाउट लिफ्टिंग एंड ट्रांसपोर्टेशन ऑफ फूड ग्रेन्स प्रोक्योरमेंट ऑफ ऑयल्स पल्सेस एंड कॉन्डिमेंट्स प्रोक्योरमेंट ऑफ पेरिशेबल रॉ मटेरियल्स स्टोरेज ऑफ रॉ मटेरियल्स Congratulations everyone on being selected as a member of the midday meal management committee of our school. Thank, Thank you ma'am. As we all know bigger roles come with bigger responsibilities. Managing the whole operation of midday meal and especially taking care of food safety and hygiene is the most important task we are going to undertake as a team. but we need to understand the nuts and bolts of food safety and hygiene in detail so that we can run the operation smoothly in the near future i request everyone to pay full attention and take notes when required this session is going to be long sure, sure ma'am The midday meal guideline envisages providing a cooked midday meal with 450 calories and 12 g of protein to every child at primary level and 700 calories and 20 g of protein at upper primary level. This energy and protein requirement for a primary child comes from cooking 100 g of rice or flour 20 g pulses and 50 g vegetables and 5 g oil and for an upper primary child it comes from 150 g of rice or flour 30 g of pulses and 75 g of vegetables and 7.5 g of oil the midday meal should contain adequate nutrients and should be palatable hygienic and operationally feasible and should be free from food adulterants contamination pathogens artificial non food grade colors and additives quality assurance of mid day meal and food safety should be an integral part of food handling procedures at the school kitchen food safety encompasses selection handling preparation and storage of food in ways that prevent food borne illness and contamination this includes proper routines that should be followed to avoid potentially severe health hazards now let's learn about the lifting and transportation of food grains of midday meal and how to procure the oil pulses and condiments for cooking as mandated under the midday meal scheme food grains are provided by the food corporation of india or fci food grains are to be allocated by annually by the department of school education and literacy with the concurrence of department of food and public distribution for primary and upper primary school level separately fci is to ensure continuous availability of adequate quantities of food grains which will be in any case not less than of fair average quality in its depot 
FCI will appoint a nodal officer for each state to take care of various problems in supply of food grains under the scheme. The sample of stocks proposed to be lifted will be drawn jointly in the presence of the representatives of the collector and or chief executive officer, district panchayat and the FCI. Sample slips will be jointly signed and sealed. One such sealed sample will be given to the state government representative. One will be sent to the FCI district office and one will be retained at the depot. Samples of lifted food grains shall be retained for three months in token of quality of grains received from FCI. In case any complaint of low quality of food grains is received within this period, these samples can be used to ascertain the veracity of the complaint. The guidelines relating to lifting and transportation of food grains are based on the guidelines issued by MHRD wide letter number F1-15-2009, desk, dated 10th February 2010. Only packed dals, salt, spices, condiments and oil with egg mark quality symbol should be purchased. Any ingredient being sold loose should never be bought. The packaging and expiry date of the ingredients should be checked. Only double fortified salt should be used for cooking midday meals. Food grains should be stored in standard bins, while plastic food grade containers are ideal for storage of dals, spices, condiments and other ingredients. Now, we will talk about the procurement of perishable raw materials and how to store them in the proper manner. Vegetables, fruits and perishable food commodities should be procured fresh and storing for a longer time or duration should be avoided. Perishable items should not be stored in plastic bags as these get spoiled quickly due to lack of transpiration. Such items have to be stored away from sunlight in a cool place. Zero energy cool chambers built with brick, sand, bamboo, cuscus or straw, gunny bags are a low cost alternative to store horticulture produce. This is an on farm storage chamber for fresh fruits and vegetables to extend their marketability. Due to their high moisture content, fruits and vegetables have very short life and are liable to spoil. The chamber can keep the temperature 10 to 15 degrees Celsius cooler than the outside temperature and maintain about 90% relative humidity. It is most effective during the summer. Storage of raw materials and ingredients should be subject to FEFO, first expire, first out or FIFO, first in, first out, stock rotation system as applicable. Raw materials which contain parasites, undesirable microorganisms, pesticides, veterinary drugs or toxic items, decomposed or extraneous substances shouldn't be accepted. All raw materials, food additives and ingredients, wherever applicable, should conform to all the regulations and standards laid down under the relevant laws. All raw materials should be physically checked and thoroughly cleaned. Raw materials should be purchased in quantities 
that correspond to storage or preservation capacity. Packaged raw material must be checked for expiry date or best before or use by date packaging integrity and storage condition. The supply of food grains like wheat and rice should not be stored for more than a quarter. They may be stored in airtight bins or stacked neatly in gunny bags or bins. In respect to storage of other raw materials, it should be stored in bags, should be away from the walls to avoid absorption of moisture. The height of the wooden plank may be at least 8 to 12 cm above the floor. Ingredients like double fortified salt, condiments, oils, soya bean, pulses, etc. should be stored in airtight containers. All containers should be of materials that do not impart toxicity to food. These containers should be cleaned at regular intervals and thoroughly dried before use. It should be ensured that ingredients used for cooking such as food grains, pulses, vegetables, cooking oil and condiments are free from adulteration, contaminants, pests and infestation. All stored raw materials and ingredients must be kept under dry and cool and ventilated conditions that will prevent spoilage, protect against contamination by pathogenic microorganisms, insects, rodents, foreign bodies, chemicals and damage. Storage of fuels, disinfectants, detergents, cleaning agents should be strictly away from the stored raw materials and under lock and key. I hope everything up to this is clear to everyone. Now it's time for a short break. After the break, we will learn about the safety and hygiene in preparation and cooking of midday meal. 